With this one, we are um, looking at a real-life scenario in which we would use a um, create an equation to try to predict what the future value of a car would be. It says that you are considering purchasing a Toyota Corolla, but you're con concerned about the value of the car over time because the automobiles typically depreciate when you purchase them new. They are worth less the following year and so forth. So this table is provided for us. Um, the Y value is the um, the value of the car. X is the number of years that you've owned it. Okay, and we're asked to write an equation in slope-intercept form of the value of the car. Well, if we do, and this works under specific scenarios such as this one, in which all of these change at the exact same rate. Okay, so if they all change at the exact same rate, what we can do here is pick any two points. I can pick 10 and 12,003, uh, 10 comma 12,323, and then I could pick 2 comma 17,123 if I wanted to. I could pick any of these two. I could pick 3 and 16,523 if I wanted to. Any of those. So what I did is I chose these two right here, 3 and 16,523. And then my other point that I decided to choose as well uh, was 8 and 13,523. And it really doesn't matter because all of these change at the exact same rate, so it doesn't matter which ones we use. But I just chose those two to, just to do an illustration of how to actually solve this one, come up with the equation. So the very first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to uh, label each. Uh, well, we're going to come up with our slope first. And our slope, when we're given two points here, we're going to use it the same in this real-life scenario as we do. Uh, in our other practice that we've done. We bring in our slope formula here. This is our y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Well, I need to label each one of these here. That way I know which one's an x1, which one's a y1, which one's a y2, and which one's an x2. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'm going to label these first ones x1, y1, and this second one x2, y2. Now you could, you could have labeled this one x2, y2 and this one x1, y1. That would have been fine. The big thing is that the one stays with each other. This is the first grouping. This one's the second grouping. That's why I labeled them x1, y1, and x2, y2. But as long as you keep these two together, this x1 and y1 together, you could have moved it over here and that would have been fine. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're basically just going to fill in this formula right here. Uh, let's see, x2, excuse me, y2 minus y1. So I've got this 13,523 minus 16,523. So I've got 13,523. That was my Y2. Now I'm going to get Y1 is right here, the 16,523. Now that I've got those, I can use my X2, which is 8 minus 3. So X2 is 8. X1 is 3. 8 minus 3. Now I'm just going to simplify that. If I simplify that, it gives me negative 3,000 O divided by 5, which hopefully you could quickly identify as negative 600. So my slope on this one is negative 600. I know that right off the bat. Well, if I know what the slope is, it's going to be fairly easy to, to figure out what the uh, y-intercept is. Remember with our equation, y equals mx plus b. Well, I know what my m value is. That's negative 600. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling that in now. Negative 600. Again, this is the exact same equation. I just filled it in with what I know for my m value. Well, up here, and any of these for that matter, uh, I have x values and a corresponding y value as well. So I can plug any of these in. It doesn't matter which one I do. Typically, you'll want to do one of these two up here that you used, um, but you don't have to. Okay, for this one, I chose this first one here. Notice how instead of writing x, I'm going to write what my x value was. Remember, my x value is 3 here. So I plug in 3 there for x. My y value was this 16,523. I plug that in for y. Now I'm going to solve it for b, and that will tell me what my y-intercept is. Okay, so six, negative 600 times 3 would be negative 1,800. Now I need to get b all by itself, so that means I'm going to add 1,800 onto both sides. When I do that, my b ends up, b ends up being 18,323. Well, now I know what my m is, and I know what my b is. Now I just have to rewrite it all. So I rewrite it here. Uh, this is my y equals mx plus b. But I know what my m is, and I know what my b is. Okay, so y equals negative 600x. That came from right here. That's my m value. Plus 18,323. That came right here from my b value right here. All right, so this is our equation. And we can go through each one of these here uh, and plug in these, and all of these should work. And that would indicate that we have the correct equation here.